All right, um, welcome to Back to School Night. My name is Miss Kim, and I am going to be your child's world history teacher for the 2020 to 2021 school year. Um, I wanted to start off by talking a little bit about what the purpose of world history is. Um, what we try to do is we start the year by framing the unit around the idea of particularly political, economic, and social factors. Um, we do also talk about religious, intellectual, and how area and geography also impact um, the experience and the histories and the shaping of different societies and empires throughout world history. Some of the topics um, that we're going to try to cover um, are going to consist of, in fall semester, a beginning of an examination of global societies in 1750 or around the 18th century. We're going to continue into world revolutions, particularly focusing on the French and Haitian revolutions, um, moving into the Industrial Revolution, um, the era of new imperialism, and finishing off in World War I. After we come back from the winter break, we'll be headed into the interwar period, World War II, the Cold War, the process of decolonization around the world as a counterpart to the era of new imperialism, and then finally finishing with contemporary issues. So what does your child learn in history? Um, we learn not only historical content, but we also will be focusing on specific um, skills. So the social science slash historical thinking skills that we're gonna be focusing on in particular are going to be analytical reading and writing skills, historical thinking skills of sourcing, contextualization, corroboration, finding and using evidence. Students will still be having discussions. They'll be done online. They'll be done in breakout groups. They'll be done on um, online chat platforms as well. Um, and they will be collaborating on both individual and group projects. How is your child going to be assessed in this class? Um, so having online learning has opened up some interesting opportunities to kind of move away from just simple multiple choice questions on assessments. For smaller formative assessments, um, there'll be some short answer questions, some book cover creation, self-created videos, polling, in-class discussions, and a variety of other measures to, to check whether or not students are understanding um, the material as we go along. And then at the end of every unit, there will be at least one summative assessment, and summative is more spanning the entire unit's content and skills, and these will consist of short essays, personal projects, and group projects as well. You can see to the right-hand side a couple examples of student projects from the Industrial Revolution Inventions Project last year. In terms of grading and expected work, um, coursework will be about 35% of the student's total grade. Major assessments um, will be 55% of the total grade, and the final exam or the semester assessment will be 10% of the total semester grade. The expected weekly homework as of now is between one to two hours of homework per week. This will vary, again, depending on each individual student and how fast or slow they choose to work through the material, um, as well as whether or not they're gonna be studying for a test um, or any other upcoming larger assignments. Um, what materials does your child need? So first, we do need a good workstation and a charged device preferably with a keypad instead of a touch screen, only for ease of access, ease of navigation for your child. Um, a history binder, a binder section, and a folder, hopefully some paper and some pens and pencils. We will, yes, be online and on screens and typing quite a bit, but it is always nice to have paper and pencil handy um, for, we're gonna be doing some like written exercises, map exercises, um, and so on. So that will come in handy as well. Students are also going to be receiving both a paper and digital copy of the course textbook. Do you want to note that the online textbook is an excellent resource. It has so many cool tools that are embedded to it. You can even select text and have the text read out loud to you if you prefer to kind of listen as you're reading or listen separately from reading. It has vocabulary defined if you click on the words, highlighting and annotating tools for you to go back so you're not actually highlighting in your real textbook, um, and some review flashcards provided as well. On synchronous days, which are our block days, which go Tuesday through Friday, um, students will be meeting with me via Zoom for the majority or the totality of the 75 minute block period. Um, don't worry, I will give them breaks. Um, during this time, we're gonna do warm ups and check-ins, see how everyone's doing. I'm gonna debrief all the homework assignments that we have. 
We're going to do discussions. We're going to answer any questions that students might have about the material that they did independently. We're going to introduce new material. I will be doing really short videos and short lectures um, to kind of broach new subjects. And we're also going to be working in breakout rooms in small groups in both discussions as well as just doing activities together with other students. On asynchronous days, which is going to be every Monday, um, students have class periods of about 40 minutes. They're going to go to Canvas and find their daily assignments already posted for them on Monday morning. These assignments, I promise, will be easy to access. They'll be independent work and they will have very clear directions. They might be something as simple as watching a short video and responding to it. Um, and assignments should take about between 20 to 40 minutes for the students to complete. Um, where can your child access information about the course? Um, this year we are adopting a new learning management system called Canvas. Um, Canvas is a pretty incredible tool that's basically bringing together five or six different platforms that students used to have to toggle between in order to get all the information they needed, like School Loop, Google Classroom, Teach More, Aries, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so it's really nice to have all those things just in one place. That being said, it has, because of its like several functions, it can be a little bit tricky to navigate. So if your child has any questions on where to find things, how to access, how to turn things in, please don't hesitate to have them reach out to me. I'm happy to walk them through that. Um, how can you help your child best succeed? Um, in their first year of high school, I would have you um, or suggest that you remind them to check Canvas every day. Um, it is going to be where all of their teachers are actively posting, actively communicating. Um, and it is helpful to be on that and to look at it and to make sure that they are up to date with what their responsibilities are. Um, please encourage them to communicate. I know that there will be tech issues at some points, um, that the kids will still get sick. There will be sick days. Um, there will be surgeries. There will be, you know, going to visit grandma out of town or otherwise. And so please just make sure that they communicate, have them um, email me or show up to a Teach More Academy um, if they need anything. Um, and then lastly, if you could help them set up a designated workspace, um, that's something that's quiet, where they can focus, well lit, and have good internet connection. Um, those factors make it just so much easier for them to pay attention and be present in class um, and to participate in all the things that we're going to be doing. Um, that's it. So thank you so much for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My email address is kkim at auhsdschools.org. And you also, if you are on the Canvas platform, you can type into your inbox um, my name and that email address will show up. So you can contact me in either one of those platforms. Yeah, thanks so much. Bye-bye.